back so soon. I knew you would not falter. Welcome back. It is week 12. So you probably realized that there is again no highlight. And the reason for that is that I did not get to play much. I did not get to play much because of two things. There were real life problems that came up that I had to handle. And making the matchup videos was actually taking too much time. Um, on the order of three to four hours a day. And I just don't have that kind of time. I've got an hour a day, which is really what the series is based around. So, after that Blanca video that I posted, I started thinking about the common attributes across the cast. What's advantage on block? What's safe on block? What's punishable on block? And I was actually fairly successful you're going to see the results of that in the next video, which should be called Patterns and Punishability. And more or less what it tells you is that across the cast, in general, these things are, are advantage, so it's still the opponent's turn. These things are safe, so it's your turn, but you can't punish them. These things are punishable, it's your turn, and you can punish them. So that's the first thing. Now the second thing has to do with game plans, which is obviously the second part of what the matchups are covering. And I think I'm going to boil it down to just a couple of things. So instead of doing a matchup uh, game plan for each character at three different ranges, because that's too, too much work, too difficult, I'm going to sum it up into generalities across the cast based on spacing and the moves that they have available. So at the long range what can people hit you with? They can hit you with spammable projectiles or really long range attacks. So immediately that draws to mind Guile, Minot, Dalzim. But using that criteria you can also add a whole bunch of other characters. Ryu, Ken, Akuma, Vega, Zeku, Fang. All of them can zone at long range. So whether or not they want to zone is a different story, but if they're at long range and not moving in, I can assume that the opponent wants to zone me out with some kind of spammable projectile or a really long range attack. Now let's talk about the mid-range. This is uh, where the neutral comes into play. And it's based on two things. Um, if the opponent has long-range attacks, he's going to try to whiff punish. If the opponent has short-range attacks, he's probably just going to hit a few and then try to move in. Because he doesn't want to get kept out and unable to deal damage. He wants to get in and deal it. So the person with the longer range is essentially going to be trying to keep the other person at the mid range and trying to whiff punish their attacks. The person with the shorter range attacks is going to try to move in to the close range where they have more advantage. Now in close you can assume that people are going to go ham on their buttons and their frame traps. However, there's a special class of character we need to worry about. Two of them, in fact. Three of them, in fact. So one is the command grab character. So Zangief, Alex, Laura, Mika, Abigail, those types. It's scary to let them get in. So if they have a command grab, you want to keep them out at all costs mid-range or long-range. The mix-up characters are characters with side switches like Ibuki and Fang. It's the same thing. You want to keep them out because what will happen is instead of command grabbing you, they'll try to side switch during their frame traps and then catch you where you're not blocking. And then the third type is of course uh, the hit and run like Nash and Jury and Blanca. They want to get in, press a few buttons, make you scared so that you press your own, 
duck out and then hit you. So for all three of them, the primary game plan is to keep them out. But if they get in, the, versus the command grab character, you just have to guess, and you may want to jump more to avoid the command grabs. Versus the side switch characters, you probably want to try and interrupt their frame traps every two to three attacks that you block. And versus the hit and run, when you see them backdash, you want to backdash yourself. Hopefully they attack into where you were so that they whiff and then you can whiff punish. So to summarize, the first item is just a generalities across the cast, what's advantage, what's safe, what's punishable. It's the next video. And then the second thing was basic game plans, again, across the cast. If they're at long range, they're probably trying to zone you if they have a projectile, and if they don't, they're trying to move in. At the mid-range, whoever has the shorter range is going to try and move in. So the person with the longer range needs to try and keep them out. At the close range, if you're up against a command grab character, I mean, just pray. That's about all you can do. Pray, try to jump, try to avoid command dashes. Versus mix-ups, try to interrupt their frame traps and their side switches so that they don't get away with murder. And versus the hit and runs, if you see them backdash, uh, backdash yourself. If you're in the corner and you see them backdash, you may just want to uh, normal neutral jump. Anything else, and we can assume that either the character wants to play neutral at the mid-range, there will be very few characters that want to do that, namely Chun and Vega. Or they just want to rush you down and make you panic. So it's not much different than command grab, hit and run, or mix up, except that they don't have any of those scary tools. They're just pressing buttons all day. So with those two things in hand, I think it's safe to say that we can probably start making our way up to platinum. And I hope I make it this week. It's only a thousand points to go. If it's not enough, then we will be back next week and talking about what we can improve. So good luck, and I will see you next time. Do you understand what it is we do now? Or did I rush you through the rules, pushing you into the play before you were prepared?